What does the Bible say about fools perishing? God desires none to perish, not even the worst criminal, not even the ones we don't like. None, none, none. God, God made them all. It's His Spirit they allow to dwell in them that brings disaster upon them. People have a habit of blaming God. Well, if God was real and if God was this, why did this happen? And how could this happen? And how could that happen? It happened because you allowed another spirit in. For God desires none to perish. We're going to 2 Peter 3. Just don't like these. Jesus likes all. Okay, so all. To, he doesn't want all to perish. If he could save each one, he would. So he's delaying as much as he could according to the word that he spoke because he can't go against his word because he's God. So if he lies, it's going to be unrighteous and it's going to be something against him on the throne. God does not lie. Amen. All right, we're going to read it again. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness, but is long suffering towards us. Not willing that any should perish, but all should come unto repentance. Verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. How does a thief come? Does the thief say, well, you know, expect me at this time. No. You just look off me and leave your windows open, okay? Does the thief do that? No. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and its works that are therein shall be burnt up. It doesn't sound nice, does it? Hmm. Get your house in order. Alright, here's what he says. Where are we? Okay. Verse 11. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Sometimes, and this is for me, I lose it. Sometimes things get so tough, so frustrating, I lose it. I lose my patience with the stupidity of, of the way that people think sometimes and they choose. I lose it. But God is calling us not to lose it. He's calling us to be under control, all right? To let the Spirit of God lead us. So here's what he says. In all holy conversation. So if you're asking a woman what, what she's wearing and what this and what that and a man, oh, you know, how he's feeling, whatever. No, that's not holy conversation. You need to cut it out. God says in holy conversation and godliness godliness not godlessness godliness so god's people are a people who are looking for what we're going to read in verse 12 looking and hastening unto the coming of the day of god wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat guess who is a consuming fire our god is a glory because if the universe gets the a blast of his glory guess what's gonna happen? we test the spirit by the word of god amen we test the spirit by the word of god all right give me a second all right we're going into we're going to need to go into 1 Corinthians 5. We're reading it over. So what is happening here is happening in Revelations, if you realize. Hand this man over to Satan. God says, behold, all souls are his. It belongs to him. All souls, not some souls.
1 Corinthians 5.5, 5, reading now, verse 4 to 6. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together in my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be in that thing. Amen? We can't be puffed up and we can't be prideful. Here's what the Lord says. He says, don't you know that a little leaven, leaven the whole lump? What is he talking about? Is he talking about baking powder? Is he talking about baking soda? What is he talking about? Is he talking about yeast? No, he's talking about sin. He says, if you let a little in your heart, because why? He says, the Lord hates pride. So he calls us to have a spirit of contriteness, of humility and gentleness, beauty in him. All right. He hates pride. He hates puffed upness. Here's what he says. Purge out therefore the old leaven. Purge it out. You got to let it out. How do you purge the sin? There's only one way to purge sin and it's through the blood of Christ. But when you're washed and you go back into sin, what are you doing? You're trampling upon the mercy of God. That's what you're doing. You know, that's why the Bible says there remains no more sacrifice for sin. Amen. We ought to walk in a way that is worthy of our salvation. Like it's something to be treasured. Amen. Start to actually set a good example in this earth. So people would look up and see that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. All right, we're going to read. So Job 1, 8. So God is saying, consider my servant Job. Have you? And Satan says, oh, he's fearing you because he has this and he has that and he has the other. So what does God say? Remove it. Remove it from him. And see if he will see what, if he will stop fearing you. He says, remove it from him. So Satan's kind of just he, because Satan wants to. He knows how how the flesh hates God. He knows. He knows. So, what caused Eve to eat from the tree? Well, Satan said, did God really say that? God said that, but did he really mean that? So the first thing was doubt. The next thing was sight. The next thing was touch. Ooh, look at his fruit, Eve. You sure this thing bad? Look at it, look at it. Ooh, wow, look at the beautiful color. Wow. Feel it, touch it. Wow, velvety. Imagine its taste. And that's where she partook. Hmm. Not good. All right, so Revelation 13, 7 is like a display of what's happening in Job 1, 8. Because they get Satan, the beast, who is getting his power from Satan. What is the beast again? A kingdom. And which kingdom wants to come back into power? For I am crucified with Christ. Amen. Are you crucified with Christ? Are you really? Well, the time is coming where you'll be tested. So what is the dressing? What is the dress that the bride is putting on? We're coming to it.